Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Today I am reviewing John Gwynn's Wrath, book four of The Faithful and the Fallen. Oh, and I guess I have something else to tell you guys, something I'm excited about, obviously. I am also reading The Shadow of the Gods. This is John Gwynn's new series that is co uh, coming out in early May, and I have an arc, so I'm going to be giving a non-spoiler review of this in about a week or so. So I thought I'd just give you a little tease here. But yes, I am today talking about Wrath, book four of The Faithful and the Fallen. And, you know, if you liked the other three books, you're just going to love Wrath. I mean, there's, there's the, uh, the same wonderful pace, the same action, the same really great handling of the characters. It's, it's a really wonderful and fitting conclusion to the series of four books. And I would say overall that Ruin was probably my favorite of the four. It edges out Wrath by just a bit. And that's probably because Ruin really features John Gwynn's range as a writer. But uh, Wrath, as I said, is just a wonderful conclusion to this series. The last few hundred pages absolutely just whew, flew by. And it was basically because I really wanted to know what was going to happen with the characters, which tells you that John Gwynn succeeded in getting me to feel invested in these characters. One of the most important things to do for an author. So I'm going to give you my non-spoiler assessment of the series as a whole and include some observations along the way about Wrath in particular. Uh, so there are a lot of strengths, a lot of great things to talk about here. Uh, and I think we should begin with the characters. And the sense of attachment, as I just mentioned to the characters, is really quite astounding. It's, it's really well done. And he does this, again, with these fast-paced books. That's, that's quite an accomplishment, really, because it's, it doesn't have the same like psychological depth that, say, Robin Hobb has or, or maybe Stephen Erickson or something like that. I mean, these, these, it's not as exactly a, as a philosophical a read. But you still feel this attachment to these characters who are vivid and really well executed. And, and that includes the animal companions, by the way. Uh, wonderful characters in there like Storm and Kraft, who are absolute fan favorites, including mine. And he, uh, I think that he succeeds, Gwyn succeeds in giving these characters a personality, distinct personalities. And some of them even have very distinct voices, such as uh, Camlin springs to mind. You always know when Camlin is talking, he has a certain uh, way of talking. Um, but he, Gwyn does a great job of giving these characters life. And I really appreciated that about these books. I felt attached to these characters, very invested in them. And a lot of that is because of the relationships between the characters, the loyalty that the characters have for one another, the friendships, the mentoring, and the losses as a consequence, as a consequence of, of the, the skill with which uh, Gwyn executes these relationships. You feel those losses. They do hit you hard. And, they, and he is not shy about killing off characters. Just be warned. So uh, another great strength of these books, as I've already mentioned, is the action. Gwyn is a master of action. And this includes uh, a lot of chase scenes earlier in the series and some really epic battles, including the, the, the of course, the last book is going to have the, the biggest epic battle of all, right? So uh, just really amazing job with that. And Gwyn is, is excellent at both the sort of eye level, the person in the midst of the chaos with the blood and the guts and everything else. And uh, he's, he puts you right in there with the characters. He does a great job of that, but he also is great at zooming out at the level of the battlefield and giving you a sense of kind of what's going on on, on the bigger picture, on the macro level. So really great. Uh, just, he is fantastic at doing these epic battle sequences and action in general. And I do think that, I've said this before, but I think his involvement in Viking reenactments is, has got to be a big help. The guy knows what he's talking about when he describes a sword fight. Uh, and he probably has some, I, I suspect, some really great battle knowledge as well. It's, uh, probably he's a, uh, a pretty well-read uh, fan of history, I'm guessing. So um, so great stuff there. The uh, There are some really 
clever strategies portrayed in, in the battles, especially in Wrath. That is something that I loved here as well. So if you love having a, a battle decided by some very clever stratagems, you're going to really enjoy Wrath. Another thing that I, I have to praise about this series, and I've said this before, but it definitely is something I don't mind saying again. I really love this as a fantastic blend of classical and modern fantasy. And this is one of the reasons that I am recommending this series to readers who are new to fantasy but want some nice adult fantasy. I love the fact that Gwyn gives us a modern fantasy in that there, there are short chapters, there's a lot of action, emphasis on dialogue, not so much exposition and description. Uh, this, this has a very modern feel to it in that sense. And there's realism in the portrayal of violence. The violence feels real, it's painful. Um, it, 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 Gwyn is not shy about describing the consequences of the violence uh, for the characters. There is some depression, there's, you know, there is grief. Uh, so he does, I think, a really good job of handling that, and it, it feels more modern in that sense. And uh, the, the, um, the deaths of these beloved characters do hit you hard, as I said before. And there's a lot of, in terms of modern fantasy, there's a lot of intrigue, political intrigue, and betrayal, and that sort of thing. And you expect that, especially after A Song of Ice and Fire, you expect that to be uh, a feature of modern fantasy, and Gwyn does that very well. Um, and yes, it, there is uh, also uh, a great sense in which this is very classical fantasy at the same time. There are some real tropes here. This is a very good versus evil kind of story. That said, Gwyn does introduce, especially with Ruin, I think some very interesting complexity into these tropes and he does his own thing with them, which is great. I think he handles the tropes well and he also surprises you a bit, especially starting with Ruin, as I said. Um, so I really appreciate that. And, um, and he also, one of the things I love, and I've re I remarked on this mainly in my reviews of Malice, the first book, and Valor, the second book, but I love the fact that John Gwynn draws from ancient Celtic myth and lore. And he does so. Uh, he, Gwynn is great at inserting some nice little nods uh, to uh, some of his influences in here, uh, whether it be through just a little bit of dialogue or through some use of language or uh, some of the plot elements, some of the magical stuff with, with the cauldrons and, and uh, there's a bit of Welsh in there. There's some Irish, lots of Irish with the, the giant's language is Irish essentially. So yeah, I, I love it. I love the fact that he draws from ancient, particularly ancient Celtic culture, but there's also a fair bit of Roman influence in there with uh, Tenebral and the shield wall and all that stuff. So I love that. I, 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 I'm a fan of drawing from uh, history and ancient lore in a way that is both an homage, but also uh, a new creative use of these cultures. So really well done. I, there are some tiny weaknesses Frankly, we could talk about a little bit, um, you know, in terms of uh, sometimes, especially maybe with Wrath, there's a bit predictable at times, uh, perhaps, in order to get to those iconic moments that Gwyn is so good at portraying. Uh, I think that uh, I wasn't surprised at some of the things that happened in, in uh, Wrath, but I was still delighted with them at the same time, so it, it felt right to me. Um, so... I think a slightly more serious criticism might be the reliance on coincidence. And I'll elaborate on that a little bit when I talk about the characters. And I'm going to have a spoiler section in this video, so I'll warn you before I do that. But it's a little bit of a reliance on coincidence in, in Wrath, particularly. Um, but uh, it, it didn't stretch my credulity, cred, credulity too much. And honestly, I, I can see why he needed to do it to get to those big moments that I really loved and appreciated. So again, not really a big deal there. I, I should warn you though, that if, if uh, you're not an action-oriented kind of reader of fantasy, then it might not be for you because there's just a lot of action in these books. Uh, I would say that Valor especially is almost non-stop action. There are some few moments where the, the characters pause, take time to grieve, that sort of thing, but it's almost breathless. Um, Ruin, I thought, was a, a, a great, as I said before, uh, sort of step above the first two books. 
partly because of the variety in there. And I, I, that was my favorite of the four. But also Wrath has some great moments of reflection and certainly grieving and loss and, and triumph and some really stirring speeches in there as well. So it could be a real tearjerker for a lot of people. I am sure of that. So, and, and including myself, by the way, <laughs> I got a little choked up at times. So great job, John Gwynn. Um, so yeah, not really much in terms of weaknesses. This is just a great series, uh, wonderful introduction to fantasy, as I said before. So let's get into the spoilers now. I'm going to talk spoilers now. So warning, uh, if you haven't read Wrath or you haven't read the series at all, then this is your time to, to uh, say goodbye and, and thank you for stopping by. So spoilers, let's talk. I just want to talk about the characters because it's so much fun. And, and I think it's fun to talk about characters when you love the characters. So Corbin, I love what Gwyn ultimately does with his character. At first, the first two books or so, he feels like a chosen one kind of trope, but he turns out to be not a chosen one. Um, and he makes his fate through courage. And that is kind of a wonderful thing. And the losses that he experiences along the way really help to make his character convincing. So Gwyn goes well beyond the farm boy to chosen one trope here and, and even inverts it in some ways. So I, I just love what he does there. Uh, the loss of, of uh, spoilers here, uh, the loss of Brina and Gar at the end of this, very touching, very well done. And you, you kind of felt that that had to be coming Inevitably, the, the loss of the mentor figure in order for the hero to, in its sort of classical kind of um, hero's journey kind of form, you know, for Corbin to completely become uh, his own man, so to speak, I guess. Um, but nevertheless, those losses were really touching, really well done, and, and Corbin's wish to honor them in the end by founding a, a school of a sort <laughs> to train people in, in combat and, and in magic in order to hunt down the remaining Kadashim. Really nice. I like that touch. I really liked the ending of this, to this a lot, actually, and I'll talk about that as well. I also love the loyalty that Corbin gets from his friends, Dath and Feral, who also, by the way, get their own very satisfying arcs. So, And his sister, too, Cohen or Cywin, as, as probably most of you say. Uh, I, you know, she is, I, I love the fact that she becomes sort of the witch at the end of this, and she has her own um, development that I really appreciated. Uh, and also, I liked her budding relationship with Veritas. That was a very nice touch. And Veritas, yeah, cool. I love where he ended up. I was a bit worried about Veritas there for a while, but uh, he came around in the end, in a very satisfying way. And of course, that confrontation with Nathair was inevitable, but so satisfying nevertheless. So Gwyn brought it to where it needed to be, I think. And we all wanted it, and we got it. So Camlin, uh, I just love his arc. Uh, his, uh, I was a little bit worried there for Camlin at moments, so <laughs> good job, Gwyn. Um, but I love his relationship with Meg. It's very touching, very endearing. Also with Idana and, and how he's grown into a person who uh, people trust and rely on and all of that. So good stuff. I would have liked a little bit more, honestly, though, of Idana. Uh, that would have been nice. We kind of see her more or less through Camlin. There's an opportunity there for a good, strong female character that I'm not going to say it didn't happen because Idana does come into her own too, but I would have loved a little bit more of her in here perhaps. But I really like where she ends up anyway. And then, of course, how can I not talk about Makin or Maquin, however you like to say it, and Fidele. Um, and I, I believe that Gwyn does a, a fantastic job with their arcs, actually, in spite of the fact that I felt the pain of the loss of these two characters and the, the tragedy uh, that happens. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's awful. But it's almost necessary in a book like this to have some significant loss for the ending to feel compelling. And I think this is where Gwyn does a really good job by having the Maquin or Macking uh, and Fidele arc end the way it does. I wasn't entirely satisfied with a, a, a little bit of the, the journey along the way. Specifically, I, I thought that the, the sort of coincidence where Fidele has gone to talk some sense into uh, this self-important son of hers, Nathair, um, and she's very misguided, of course, in this, and, and you can just feel what's coming. 
Um, but then having Lycos sort of pause in the middle of leaving for this very important mission to say, hmm, I, maybe I'm going to try to find Fidele. And then just the, the, the vast coincidence in this giant forest of them stumbling upon each other. That part I just thought was just a little contrived. Um, however, that said, I, I, I think that I love the way Gwyn ended the arc and it's just a little bit of a hiccup along the way in, in terms of how it got there. I don't even know if that whole side journey um, to find the torque was, uh, it wasn't my favorite part of Wrath, let's just put it that way. Um, but all that said, like once again, I, I just loved where this particular arc ended up and I feel like it was necessary for the entire book to feel compelling and satisfying because uh, you've got to have loss along with the triumph. So, uh, and just, uh, you know, a couple of minor complaints about some of the characters. And look, it's a huge epic and you're gonna not entirely satisfy everyone with every single arc. There were a couple characters I would have loved to see more of, like Halion, for example. I felt like he was an underdeveloped character with some great potential. Um, no, no complaints about where he ended up. I just would have loved to have seen a little bit more of him along the way, sort of like Adana, I guess. Um, and his relationship with Connell, there was a lot of potential there. I love where it ended up in the end. That was a great moment in the, uh, the, the final battle when Connell, uh, greets his brother. Um, and of course all the baddies get their, their comeuppance in here, um, in, in a way that I think most readers would find very satisfying, uh, including... One of the, probably one of those iconic moments right up there with, you know, in, uh, <clears throat> in Ruin where Corbin uh, jumps onto his horse shield or when he has his duel with Sumer, um, the Kadoshim version of Sumer that is, you know, right up there with those iconic moments um, is the, um, the fantastic moment um, at, when Corbin takes Gar's advice and he makes this sacrifice uh, as he's dueling uh, um, Calidus, and he uh, takes a wound to give a wound. You know, that's just a really well done thing. So congratulations to John Green on this really fantastic epic series. Uh, it is full of just some really amazing, iconic moments, great action. Uh, it really left me, I have to say, Wrath as a conclusion to the series, left me feeling a sense of triumph and loss, a sense of beauty and tragedy, and a sense of joy and sorrow. A lot like life, I guess. So, I will next be, I'm very excited to be reading The Shadow of the Gods, and I, I'm excited because, A, I like Gwyn's writing a lot, and B, I am excited to see what he does with a Viking-inspired book. So, a Viking-inspired series, and that's what The Shadow of the Gods is as it begins this series. So I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you will join me for my next review. Until next time.